The clocks have changed, spring is here, and the Formula One season has started. Welcome to the very first The Week in Motorsport. We'll be doing these once a week and covering news, opinion, insights, and all the happenings over the last seven days. Joining me today, we have Damien Smith, the editor, and Nigel Roebuck, the editor-in-chief. These are going to be short, they'll be to the point, and hopefully they'll be opinionated. So, let's get started. Formula One race over the weekend, Australian Grand Prix. Uh, should we really have been surprised that Vettel ran away with it in the race after qualifying? Uh, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. I mean, the, in a way, the biggest surprise to me over the weekend was not that Vettel was where he was, but was that for reasons we still don't know but understand, Mark was so far away from him. Yeah. Because uh, Mark was fastest in the first session. Um, and I thought it would be another sort of, you know, one, two nose to tail job. Yeah. It was a bit concerning how. Uh how quick he was, Vettel, and how much of a gap there was to, to Lewis. I mean, I don't know, it's early days, and Australia isn't, isn't always the best um, uh, circuit in terms of giving us a clear idea of what, where we are. But no, no, that, that, on, and without that, curves as well. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And the other surprise, well, the two surprises, apart from uh, Weber not staying anywhere near Vettel, were a the McLaren were so quick, and the, and b that Ferrari were not, you know, where we'd expected. Them. And you know, I've got to ask, other surprises on your part? I mean, surely Petrov on the podium is, is a big story. Yeah, drive of the race for me, Petrov. Yeah. I thought he did a superb job to come through for third place. I felt a bit sorry for him because everyone's saying um, what will Kubica do in that car if, if yeah. Petrov can finish third. But let's just give him his due. I think he he, he got there on merit. Um, and he was very competitive all weekend. So. You, you do wonder what Kubica would have done in that car, but, but <laughs> You've I got to. think um, he deserves a lot of credit and he must have taken a lot of confidence from that. Other drivers to of note, I think um, Perez on his debut, um, forget about the car being disqualified. I thought he did an excellent job on, on two sets of tyres, yeah. which surprised everyone. And, um, Even Pirelli, I think. Yeah, probably Pirelli <laughs> They, well, they yeah, couldn't absolutely. believe it. And yeah. um, I thought Paul Dresta did a great job out qualifying Sutil and finishing just one place behind him. Um, so I think there's enough to be positive about. I don't think it's all negative. I think it's, you know, you've seen some reaction, people up in arms saying it wasn't, it wasn't any good. It was much better than Bahrain last year, for example, yeah. which was a, a disastrous first Grand Prix. So um, I think we're set for a reasonable yeah. season. Not difficult on that, I think. Oh, it was better than Bahrain Trump. last year. But I mean, no. Nigel, I've, you know, we've <laughs> got to talk about them, the new rules. We've got Kurz, adjustable rear wing. Did, did they help? What, did you notice? Have we got to give them more time? Uh, I, yeah, I suppose they, they, you know, they help to some degree. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of Kurz, full stop. I never have been, never was. I thought it was at a time when Formula One was being told to, you know, trim its sales, cut costs dramatically. This was introduced and it was horribly, horribly expensive. Uh, and I think, all right, you, you can say that it probably helps Formula One's green credentials to a degree. Um, I, to, as far as I'm concerned, it adds nothing, whatever, to racing. I, I have no, no interest in Kurz. And the wing, um, difficult to know what to say. I mean, I was interested in Lauda's um, uh, opinion of it, which is that he said, well, essentially now the FIA is deciding, you know, where people should pass. Yeah. Um, and he said, um, and then it was put to him that, you know, okay, but in the turbo days, you guys had, had a boost button, you could put the turbo boost up. And Nicky's response was, yes, dead right, but so could the guy being overtaken. Yeah, yeah. and anywhere on the lap as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, what he thinks is, you know, that it's essentially it's false. Yeah. And, you know, I, know, I can't really argue with that. Because all these measures are, to me, are, you know, a cover for the fact that the, the fundamental problem, the aerodynamics, is never addressed. Hmm. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's why the, the amount of overtaking has gone down so much and until that's well and truly addressed and, and radically so that they get away from the emphasis on the wings and, and perhaps go back to shaped underbodies like they, you know, they used hmm. to have and like they had in card um, I don't really see the situation changing yeah. Yeah. They, I mean I thought it was interesting I can't remember now which of the drivers it was the weekend used the word gimmicks hmm. Hmm. And that's, what that's, they are. Yeah. and that's what they are. Yeah. But I think um, if we get to Malaysia, which is a circuit with greater chances of overtaking on that, that long straight into the hairpin yeah. and then down the main pit straight, uh, if we end up with a very entertaining race with lots of passing and um, you know, uh, competitive racing, then I won't complain too much. Mm. Um, the, the thing that struck me was that it wasn't all that different from 2010. You, you, know, you wouldn't have known if, you, if, you, if the, uh, the symbols weren't coming up on screen 
about when they were using Kurz and when they were using the removable rear wing. You wouldn't yeah. have known, really. Yeah. It wasn't obvious. Yeah. And um, Australia, as I said earlier, is, is not a race you can judge a season on. Let's let's give it time and see how it develops. But as Nigel says, I agree with Nigel completely that it, it's hiding the real problem, yeah. uh, which is the fundamental problem of the aerodynamics in Formula One, which has to be tackled yeah. with the new cars in 2013. But I, th I think it was actually you who said you can't undo 20 years of aerodynamics. You know, it's, but, but uh, anyway, let's not dwell on that. Let's keep moving. Um, we could be here all day, but uh, it's, let's let's move over to America and uh, Indy car race at St. Petersburg. I mean, Damien Frank Itty, you know, despite being off the pace in testing, did a McLaren, well, yeah. Ganassi did a McLaren, and, and there they were, he romped away. Yeah, I mean, again, you can't read too much into testing, particularly in something like Indy cars. They, don't, they know their, their cars inside out. They're still the same cars they were racing last year and the same engines. <coughs> it's 2012 when we get the new rules where things might be shaken up a bit. But Ganassi, uh, you know, is, is the best team in Indy car racing. Frankiti is full of confidence, as we know from our... You know his visit over to us at the Hall of Fame. He, you know he's uh, um, on top of the world at the moment, yeah. and um, his performance in, in St. Peach showed exactly that. Yeah. And Nigel, one of the big stories to come out of the race was you know the huge first corner pileup, and you know this has come out because they used to start in single file and they've now gone to abreast. And it was you know you, I saw the footage of them going to the first mm. corner, mm. and there was no way they were going to get get round. I mean, no. should, do they need? Does this need to be addressed or? Can we well, hear the opinion? I, 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 I mean, the first corner accident, I mean, they, you know, frankly, they should have been able to get around because that wasn't a start. It wasn't a restart. Hmm. Um, and the start, you know, you have to start them side by side because that's, that's the way it is. Um, but you mean when then Castro Neves just forgot to break? Yeah, I, th I think, and also and people have been talking about Andretti into, as well. Well, he pitched into the back of Marco, and, yeah. and then Marco went over the top of, um, it, did he go over the top of Conway? I think he did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I, I, you know, I don't think I, that that was one thing. I mean, that it was a classic first corner accident, and they've had them there before. Um, I can see why they thought it might be worth trying this, you know, um, two abreast restart thing after, uh, you know, after yellows. Uh, but I think on the evidence of you know of last Sunday, it's it's an experiment. They tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it not because you know? I mean, it was it was somebody. One of the drivers were making the point. In NASCAR, you know, you can, I mean, the NASCAR cars run into each other habitually and, yeah. and you know, and nobody takes any notice and the race goes on. <laughs> yeah. These things, somebody's upside down or a wheel's torn yeah. off and they're out. And, yeah, I mean, is, um, is there not something to be said for, you know, these are some of the best drivers in the world, is they, surely they can cope with this? Well, yeah, yes, that, 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 that is an argument, but I think, um, I, you know, for instance, if there'd been a yellow um, right at the end, and Dario was, what, like seven, eight seconds up the road. Uh, I think it would have been terribly hmm. sad if he had then been jumped on a restart yeah. um, by somebody alongside him who shouldn't have been alongside him because he was seven <laughs> seconds back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and lost the race that way. Yeah. So I, I think, I think two abreast restarts are fine for NASCAR, but I think for IndyCar they need to go back to yeah. what they had. Um, well, Particularly you know, on road circuits. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, moving on to World Rally Championship, mm -hmm. huge news, Loeb didn't win, um, yeah. you know, beaten by Ogier. Is, are we seeing a, a turn in the tables here? I mean, Ogier is, Loeb's had lots of teammates throughout his career, and he's outright beaten all of them. Um, yeah. And Ogier seems to be, be able to match him for pace. Yeah, the signs are there, aren't they, that um, we've, we, have a, uh, we have a battle on our hands for the first time in years, which is, you know, it's about time too, really. Um, Ogier seems to be the real deal. I think Loeb looks like... He knows it and is uh, slightly shaken by the, the fact there's a young upstart who's um, ready to take him on. So it's great news for the sport and the, the new World Rally cars um, uh, with the, the, the new regs for this year, they seem to be working well and um, lots to be positive about on the, on the rally front. Yeah, well, look forward to the rest of the season. Everyone, you've been watching Nigel Roebuck and Damien Smith. I've been Ed Foster. We've been Motorsport Magazine. Have a great week motor racing. <laughs>